Hey everyone, it's Flying Gato here with another car review. So I'm actually in Florida now and um, I have a rental spec Mustang for me to show you today. It's got 42,000 miles of rental mileage. So with that caveat, let's take a look at it and uh, see what it is. It's a 2014 Mustang. Uh, it's got the V6, automatic, and yes, it is convertible. Um, what I do like about it is the way it looks. I mean, I think it looks great. It has a great shark looking no, uh, nose on it. The way it lights up at night has some LED uh, highlights over here. Close up here, these two light up and they look amazing. The projector headlights actually work really, really well. Um, the lighting in here, the lighting on this car is actually really, really good. The fog lamps are amazing. Uh, they just make the, light, they make the car pop. I love the front of the car. It's a great looking car from the front. I mean, they did a really good job of designing this car. And uh, yeah, when I saw it on the lot, I'm like, yep, I want that Mustang. So the little front, front side profile here, it looks really good. Um, you know, the one thing I don't like about the looks of this car is that tan top. It feels a little bit 80s to me, but you know, it is a convertible, and I do like convertible, so I'll take it. Uh, the red ones and the other color ones come with a black top, which is a little better. This one comes with a tan top. This is my second favorite, uh, second most favorite angle right here. This is the, the rear quarter panel, and man, those lights look amazing. I mean, I'm sure you guys seen it in videos already, but those turn signals, the way they turn, and I'll turn them on in a second to show you guys. It looks amazing. They uh, they light up great at night. The little LED uh, highlights, and again, they did a really great job of designing this car. This is the quintessential American muscle car, and it's really, really good. The fact. That All right, these rims. I actually like these rims a lot. They're. Uh, I guess they're gunmetal gray. They they go really well with the white. I would go with the little shinier rims. I'm not a big, big fan of the blackout rims, but these are not really black, so I really like them. Mustang Club of America, I could do without that decal, but you know, to each their own. Like I said, this tan top could definitely use a replacement. I mean, I like the black top better. So let's take a look at the inside. Now, here's where it starts getting a little bit disappointing. So, I mean, the tan seats, I'm never a big fan of tan seats, but the seats themselves are actually very comfortable. Uh, they're more, I mean, they're less sporty and more comfortable. Um, they do hug you a little bit. The seats are actually pretty good. These doors are actually really heavy. Um, but you'd expect that in a two-door car. Uh, that's not a big deal. The touch points here, they're not bad. Um, leather here, you know, leather here. They're actually not bad at all. Uh, my biggest complaint is this kind of instrument panel here. I, it's not it's not the best system that they have. It is the shaker system, so the sound is amazing. The only thing I don't like about it, like I said, is just the design and the layout of it. Could have done a better job of that. The steering wheel itself, it feels kind of plasticky to me. You see that play it has. Again, like I said, this is a this is a, a rental spec vehicle, so just keep that in mind. I love this dual bin design. You know, everything's plastic, but you know it's fine. You know, you're not touching that for the most part. It's um, I think it's I think it's a great design. It's just could it could do with a bit better material, especially for the tire for the wheel. I mean, the wheel itself should be a more sporty wheel. I feel like it should be a little smaller. But it is a, it is a muscle car, so uh, that's how that's how they design muscle cars in, in the in the past. Let's take a look at the back seat here. It's effectively useless. Not much space back there at all. 
I'm not sure if that's a function of the of the convertible. I don't think so. I think all Mustangs are like that. I mean, you could maybe if you put the seat up a little bit. Let's see if I can put this up. Uh, yeah, it could probably fit a person there in a pinch. The instrument panel from here. So if you look at the speedometer and the and the tachometer, very retro. I love it. It's very simple, right in front of you. The thing I don't like about this is the controls. So I come from German and, and Japanese cars. To have the windshield wiper stuff on this side is a little weird and clunky to me, right? Uh, this I'm used to, of course, German cars. But there's nothing here. So where your turn signals is the same thing. So they use one stock for everything. There's your turn signals, this is your, your so I'll, I'll a little close up of it, this is your turn signals, this is your wipers, you push to clean, high beams, like this is one stock for everything. I'm not sure I like that. You know, it actually might be a good idea, but I'm used to having two stocks for stuff and then uh, this as well. The steering wheel itself, very functional here. You have a lot of uh, different buttons and modes. I'll go quickly. I mean, this is the boring stuff. So, I mean, you have, let me get closer there. So you have, you know, you have gauge mode, you know, change oil temp, normal, mission oil, normal pressure. You can do different details. You can trip AB, fuel economy. Now, the fuel economy I wanted to point out. Uh, I've averaged about 16 miles to the gallon. Uh, I've only driven this car about, I'd say less than 100 miles. And I've already eaten up half the tank. Now, that is, that is you know, because I, I'm quite speedy <laughs> when I drive around. I, I do use the gas pedal a lot more than most people. But 60 miles to the gallon is a little bit low to me. I'm sure if you drove like a Saint, you can get close to 25 miles to the gallon. It's not great, but just remember it is a sports car and it's a heavy sports car at that. So that's something to, to take note of. I want to point out real quick the, the, the driving position here. So as, as I'm sitting here, you see the hood right up there. It's right in your sight line. I love, about, I love that about the, the Mustang. I think the Camaro has a similar layout. All muscle cars have the same kind of thing. You know, you see the, you see the hood, you feel that you're tucked in, powerful, right behind the engine. And that's, that's what it should be feeling like, and that's what it does feel like. It's great. I, I love, as soon as I got into this car, I'm like, wow, look at that hood line. I, I love it. Um, driving it around, you, you kind of point, you point and choose where the nose goes. It's, it's, it's really a great, uh, great um, idea how to, to put that hood line in your sight line. It's great. Uh, you have a 12-volt charger here. Uh, it's kind of a flimsy little piece of plastic that'll break off in a few years. You have traction control. You have your hazards here. You have trunk release here. You know, I get, get the buttons confused here. You know, you get the, the fan, the volume controls. I get, I, you know, not my car. So I got them confused a few times. Oh, let me let me raise the volume and I, I raise the fan speed. And then, oh, let me, let me lower the volume. Let me raise the fan speed and I raise the volume, right? So not the best some blank buttons over here I can't even see whatever dial that is over there oh that see that other dial over there is the temperature control you can't even see it on this side that's not a great design but overall I mean I'm actually pretty impressed with the way this car came out this car this car is pretty good now again this is a 2014 Ford Mustang and it's a convertible so why don't we take the top down and this is where I really don't like um, the way they designed the car so and this probably has to do with the fact that this is actually a coupe and they chopped the top off and they made it into a drop top and this mechanism up here it is very clunky I mean all right, to open it is pretty simple just do that and then you know it opens but as you can see it takes a long time to open still going still going and there you have it now once it's down it's amazing. It's really good. Love the way it looks, love the way it drives, love the way it feels. It has little uh, back windows up back here that you can raise and lower. That helps with the buffeting. And I mean, you have the open air design. Great feature of this car. Now, let's take a look at this hood right here. Let's look at the engine. The V6 lump.
that has this pumping out 300 horsepower, and you feel it, it's a really good engine actually. Um, 300 horsepower, it's, it's a, it's, the fuel economy is not great, but when you get on it, it does feel pretty powerful. The transmission could use a little bit of an upgrade, but if you use it in sport mode, it actually drives really well. Um, I love the, the amount of room you have in here. Of course, the engine bay was designed to fit a V8. This car come, does come in V8 form, uh, but this is the V6, so you got plenty of room to work on it. See the belts right here. You got the strut bar up there. I think it's great. So, big fan of the engine. Big fan of the engine bay. Take a look at the, the lake we have here. It's very quintessential Florida. Not bad. So actually I wanted to point out the turn signals. So let me turn on the head dance. Oh, there it is. Love the way the lights up. That's just great. That's the other great thing about this car. Really great sound. Punch it, just punch it. That sounds amazing. Sounds great. I love the little Ford convertible. <laughs> That's great. And uh, all right, so it's time to uh, get in and get go for a drive. Let's go do that. Oh, judge up afterwards. Come on in. So the transmission has a regular drive mode and a sport mode. I recommend the sport mode so you can shift using these. The transmission is actually very responsive with that. <laughs> Not very conducive to burnouts this thing. It's okay. Alright, so let's get on the road. Motorcycle with no helmet. This thing drives great. Has great power delivery. Transmission is very responsive. Well, when I say very responsive, it's very responsive for uh, a slush box and a regular automatic transmission. The one on the BMW actually. So I have a BMW that has an automatic transmission. Response better than this one, but this one's actually not bad. Not bad at all. And it blips for downshifts does the upshifts really quickly. I wish it had paddle shifters. This little plus and minus thing here is not really cutting it for me. Not bad. So that was the acceleration. Now, in Florida, one of the unfortunate parts about Florida, there's not many good driving roads that I've found at least. It's always, everything's always straight, left and right. But on the on-ramps and off-ramps, you can feel the way the car goes. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can find an on-ramp. Alright, 
find a little on-ramp here. Let's see what we can do. Putting the top up on this car. Let's do it. Just watch it go up. Two, three, four, five. I mean, come on, let's go. It takes way too long for this top to go up. All right, so it's here, and now we have to latch this thing together. It's quite clunky. We have to pull the top down, right? I really don't like the design. Again, keep in mind this car is a rental car, but to have to do all of that, kind of force it in there, it's not a, good, it's not a very good design. It's raining. It started to rain, so good thing we put the top up. Good timing. Yeah. And that's it, guys. So, uh, thank you for watching. It's Flying Gato. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like the video. If you don't like it, comment and tell me why. And from Mrs. Flying Gato and Flying Gato, have a good day, guys.